I think you can see my slides, right? Yes, we can see. Yeah. Okay. So it's about the breach presentation. It's a very interesting topic because breaches always fascinate, always gives trouble. And um, nowadays we normally deliver breaches by cesarean section, but it's a very interesting topic to talk about. So there are two types of longitudinal lies. One is cephalic presentation, other one is the breach. Breach is when the buttocks lie over the maternal pelvis. So it's, it occurs about 3 to 4% of term pregnancies, but you have to understand this is term. It is much more common in preterm. Um, about at about 28 weeks, it might be about 25%. So it's always if someone asks you, uh, what is the, what is the, um, uh, what is the prevalence of breach? You have to ask at what gestation you are talking about. Are you wanting to know about the term pregnancies or preterm pregnancies? Because at preterm, a breach presentation is much more common. Right. Why is it important? Because term babies presenting by breach presentation is known to have. <coughs> give me one minute. Yeah known to have a worse outcome than Catholic ones, irrespective of the mode of delivery. Now, irrespective of the mode of delivery. So um, we might be thinking that uh, um, if you allow a breach to be delivered carefully, I mean, sorry, a breach to be delivered vaginally, only the problems are high. But that is not the case. Even if you do a cesarean section on the breach, these babies are at a higher risk of morbidity and mortality. That is because the baby in breach is not a normal baby. It might be a problem with the placenta, maybe problem with the uterus, maybe problem with the baby. That's why. So there are three types of breach. One is the extended breach. You can see the both legs are extended and the feet are above the head. You see? the. I mean, uh, this is the extended breach, the legs are extended. The presenting part is buttocks and this is a, the one that we normally allow the baby to deliver in this way. If the baby wants, if the mother wants a breach delivery. Then you have the flexed breach. Now here, the buttocks and the legs both are presenting the lower part. So extended breach and the flexed breach, right? See the legs here. See, it's very important. And then you have the troubling breaches. They call it, you call them the flex, uh, the footling breach. Now, the problem with footling breach is the breach is up and the legs are only coming down. When the legs are coming down, you know there's not much of surface in the legs. So there's enough space in between for the cord to come out of the, uh, the cervix if you do an ARM in this case. And that is that will lead, lead, uh, give rise to a condition which is a severe. Um, obsolete emergency, which is called the cord prolapse. So there are so many causes and associations with breach. Um, commonest is idiopathic that we don't know the cause. And the preterms, as I told you, they're having a higher risk of breach because the baby is small, the baby can stay in any way. Then previous breach presentation, uterine abnormalities, placenta previa and obstruction to pelvis, uh, fetal abnormalities and multiple pregnancy all can give rise to breach. Right. Then complications of breach presentation. There are maternal complications and fetal complications. What are the maternal complications? Maternal complications, there's increased uh, maternal morbidity and mortality, especially because it can cause, if you allow a vaginal breach delivery, it can cause prolonged labor. And it can cause uh, very much discomfort to the mother because the head is in the upper pole. And the, when you eat, you feel like very dyspeptic and you're having a very discomfort after you eat. And then uh, at the time of delivery, we need some manipulations. I'll talk about them later. So because of that, you can have problems, especially uh, you, uh, if it's a past section or any scar uterus that can cause even uterine rupture. And ultimately... Most of the breaches nowadays are delivered in cesarean section and all the risks associated with cesarean section carries for the breach. Well, fetal complications, the prematurity is the biggest problem. Prematurity is the biggest problem. 
then spontaneous rupture of membranes cord prolapse and then entrapment of the fetal head you all know the fetal head comes last during breech delivery and the head is the biggest organ in the body and when the head comes last the cervix has no time enough to dilate up to the level of the head and that's the why that's why the fetal head can get entrapped then you have asphyxia because if you don't manage to deliver the breech on time and the head head gets entrapped the baby can have hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and because the head is compressed and decompressed suddenly at the time of delivery uh, there can be intraventricular hemorrhages in the breech delivery and fetal trauma is also common so how are you going to diagnose this so we have to understand that as i told you preterm breaches are very common you don't go and diagnose breach or document that this baby is breached prior to 36 weeks otherwise it will make the matters worse and everybody will be treating as a breach and only to see when she comes to delivery it is a catholic percentage so when you want to diagnose breach you have to do it after 36 weeks right so there will be a longitudinal line and the head will be balloted at the upper pole you know balloting is when you have something you can feel in between your hands give me one minute i'll come on screen i'll show you so you can see me balloting is something like this say you have a ball this ball in between so if you can do like that like that so this is called balloting so normally you will uh, get the balloting only when the head is in the upper pole or a very much unengaged head in the lower pole otherwise balloting won't be there in engaged head right um and the presenting part is not hard you know because the head is normally a very hard surface when you press in between you can feel a very hard surface but breach will be a firm surface right and uh, if you check the fetal heart sounds it will be very well heard in the upper pole rather than in the lower pole you confirm the diagnosis by ultrasound ultrasound scan you always have to measure the estimated fetal weight and the head circumference if you want to excuse me sir because the current went there's no electricity so um, you can hear me right yes sir okay so we confirm the diagnosis by ultrasound scan and uh, always when you do a scan you have to see the estimated fetal weight as well as the head circumference and the uh, and exclude any abnormalities in the fetus because these are common with breech presentation how to manage so all women at term breech presentation we offer them a thing called external cephalic version we have to try to turn the baby head uh was uh, make a somersault in the baby to cephalic presentation so uh if the babe mother does not want ecv then she has to be counseled about the risks and benefits of planned cesarean section versus a vaginal bleed delivery and then we will offer her what she prefers so external cephalic version what is this so we are trying to uh, turn the baby from breech to cephalic presentation externally 
normally we do it after 36 weeks because if not done early is easy but the baby will turn back to the breech presentation after some time <laughs> it has reduced the requirement of cesarean section drastically so it's an advantage right so what is the method give me one minute Okay, so, so you take the consent and you get the uh, presentation and, the, and where the back keys and where the placenta is, all these things, you confirm with the ultrasound scan. And you check for any uh, CVIUGR or any other contraindic contraindications and you check whether the Lyca volume is adequate. Once you do all these things, you take a CTG to see whether the baby is doing fine. Once you do these three things, then you can attempt either forward somersault or backward somersault. Forward somersault is, I'll show you. Right. Forward somersault is if the breech is like this and the head is here and the breech is here, you try to do head towards the anterior side like that. Head, forward somersault. Backward somersault is like this, backward. So either way, you can do either forward somersault or backward somersault and try to turn the baby. We must not use excessive force. Because of that, we don't give analgesics. I mean, if the mother is feeling pain, that means we are using excessive force. And if you do use excessive force, you can sometimes tear off the placenta and cause a placental abruption, which is, I mean, much more worse than doing a cesarean section for a breach. So don't use excessive force. Once you finish doing the ECV, if it's successful or not, anyway, you have to do a CTG and if she is RH negative, you have to give Rogat. Okay. Right. So this is the forward somersault. You want to disengage the breech, hold the baby's head, try to turn forwardly, forward somersault, and then try to do like that. That is called the forward somersault. So there's about 50% chance of success, uh, but 3% will do a spontaneous, you know, turn back again. Uh, we use uh, utero uh, uh, tocolytics to facilitate this, uh, uh, facilitate this procedure. You can use either sublingual nitroglycerin or uh, terbutylene subcut, right? When you give that, the uterus relaxes and it will make our job easy to try to turn the baby. So, very rarely only you will need immediate delivery if you try to do an external Catholic version. So, it is a, a not a huge risk. But there is a theoretical risk that you have an abruption or ruptured membranes. There is a theoretical risk, but it is not very true. So, you don't have to arrange theater you know, cross-match blood and do all these things before a ECV. It's not necessary. But there are contraindications. You have to know the contraindications. So, uh, absolute contraindications is if she had a cesarean section previously. So, if uh, you have a scarred uterus, you are not going to turn the baby in a scarred uterus. The baby will come out of the sky and end up in the tummy. If there's antepartum hemorrhage, no. If the baby is compromised, definitely not. If they are soligahadramnios, you are bound to fail. No. If the mother has recess isomunization, no. You will increase that problem. And if the mother has preeclampsia with a lot of fluid inside and all these things, no. Right? So, we call nowadays the most recent data says with only one previous cesarean section, unlike past two cesarean sections, if the mother really likes and uh, if the mother understands the risks and benefits, you can attempt a ECV. And sorry, and fetal compromise, sorry, fetal abnormalities also with the mother's consent you can do. And maternal hypertension is a relative contraindication. Right. So how can you deliver a breach presentation? As I told you, um, you can do an external Catholic version and deliver the baby by Catholic presentation. But if that fails, what can you do? Well, the term breach trial and meta-analysis has shown that 
short term neonatal morbidity and mortality is reduced by an elective cesarean section when compared to vaginal breech delivery but this is not in long term oy kiyanne baba delivery karapu gaman pbu daanna wena scene ekai um resuscitate karanna wena scene ekai oxygen denno ni e wage katha bata tika wedi in uh, vaginal breech delivery then um uh, elective cesarean section So, uh, ideal candidate for a vaginal breech delivery would be a ex extended breech presentation, um, spontaneous onset of labour. You no, never go and induce a breech. Huh? You never go and induce. And weight less than three point eight kilograms. It's uncompromised baby, very healthy baby, and well flexed uh, head at ultrasound scan. Right, a good flexed head, giving the min minimum diameter. to come out of the pelvis you normally don't do an arm and start syntocinon in breech you allow spontaneous onset of labor and spontaneous delivery in breech presentation so breech presentation the procedure is the once the woman is fully dilated and she is pushing you take the push woman into the lithotomy position you know what is lithotomy it is not dorsal position it's lithotomy position and then infiltrate with a local anesthetic very well the perineum so that you can give a good uh, um, episiotomy when it needs and golden rule keep your hands away keep your hands away i'm coming online now so keep your hands away just let the woman deliver so when the breech is climbing like crowning in uh, my data is going on okay like crowning in uh, cephalic presentation breech in breech presentation it will be climbing when the breech is climbing we give a good episiotomy right and then uh, delivery the delivery of the legs is very easy you just have to click the legs out from the posterior uh, from the anterior surface of the baby so it's like this i'll show you a picture so if the if if i will take this phone if if the baby is coming out like that towards me just from below there will be legs you just click the legs out that's what you call uh, delivery of the legs now delivery of the legs is not that difficult right so see when the baby is coming out you slowly cling out the legs see this hand cling out the legs once you deliver the legs you don't do anything i will tell you about this other procedures which with the slides so this is the delivery of the legs see so after that you take your hands off again and allow the, the maternal effort to uh, deliver the baby more below right and gently will bring down loop uh, a loop of umbilical cord uh, if it is entangled and then slowly wait until the baby's uh, abdomen is delivered and you see the shoulder blades from uh, the shoulder blades or the scapula the low edge of the scapula when you see then then you have to deliver the hands so right okay so once you uh, come to this point the shoulder blades now say allowing the baby to stay when the shoulder blades are here seen in the maternal pelvis then you try to deliver the breech uh, the hands now here what you have to do is no, it's not the shoulder blades it's the scapula right so once the scapula is seen what you can do is if the leg if the hand is like this give me i'm coming online so if the hands are like this down if the hands are like this it's very easy you can see these hands below so you can just pull it out you can pull it out uh, but problem is if the baby is like this this is difficult because when the breech is out you cannot hold this part and deliver the hands so the if the hands are extended now they are uh, we have to do a procedure it's called the low set procedure for extended arms so it is this is the procedure i'll show you in the picture
so when it comes you hold the baby's hips like this right and you turn 180 degrees from the where, from the place the baby is in and then get the posterior shoulder anteriorly then normally with that the anterior when the when you turn 100 see this position comes to this position when it comes this hand will be very close to being out see so you deliver this hand then you turn another 180 degrees the other side like this see then this hand can be delivered like this see now here you just pull it out see so that's called the low set what is the low set you get uh, you uh, hold the baby from the hip turn 180 degrees to get the posterior shoulder anterior and once you deliver the that shoulder you turn another 180 degrees to get the other posterior shoulder anterior and then you deliver the two shoulders right once you deliver the shoulder the hands then is to deliver the head now don't pull again if you pull the head will get extended right head will get extended and it's a problem so you do a thing called mauricio smiley weight you do this mauricio smiley weight maneuver when the head is when you can see the inferior hairline of the baby now that means the head is down you can do the mauricio smiley weight maneuver how do you do that you take a uh, you take this is mauricio smiley weight menu you see one hand will support the baby from below and the other hand from top and then Someone might give a fundal pressure to keep the head flex and then deliver the baby. This is called Morsius Smelly weight menu, right? Um, alternatively, you can do the forceps. This is called a Piper's forcep. You put the forcep from, someone will hold it, hold the baby from the leg and someone will put the forcep like this. And then you take the natural angle of the uterus and take the baby out. So that is called uh, forceps delivery for a after coming head. Yeah, so that is how you do the breech delivery. But you don't, these are practical stuff. You don't have to know them. You don't have to memorize this. Only the fundamental basics you read. This lecture you can um, ask from our department. I will give it to the department and keep I, if, if not given. Uh, when you come to your finals, we do an emergency obstetric course. And in that, with a dummy, we will teach you how to do a breech delivery. So don't worry about if you can't understand step by step. Right? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I will stop for now. Okay. Thank you. Right.